a good look at Tony Ramos. Another match that uh, could be competitive. Don't know, but Tony Ramos has been on fire lately. And a good look at Daryl Thomas, 133 pounders. Tony Ramos, uh, the second ranked wrestler in the country, 17 and 0. He came off, of course, the big pin in the win over Penn State a week ago. Daryl Thomas has uh, been kind of a roller coaster season for Thomas, 19 and 5. He's had some real highs, peaks and valleys, but here's a here's a great spot again for Thomas as his teammate Delgado just did to capitalize on the momentum and make a statement here with the undefeated Ramos. Now, there's not many times where Tony Ramos takes the mat where Mac McDonough's got beat before he walks out there, so it's a different environment here. Thomas does have the athletic ability, and but but Ramos, ranked number two in, in the previous dual meet with the with that Tim and Mark Johnson were able to go ahead and bring with the Ohio State Michigan meet. We got a good look at uh, Logan Steber and what he brings on the feet. There's probably, with the, maybe the exception of David Taylor from Penn State, there's nobody that's, that's, that's putting up more match points than uh, Tony Ramos out there. He's doing a great job of getting on his offense. Yeah, Ramos in his uh, 17 wins, 15 of them, he scored bonus points. And any coach will tell you when it comes Big Ten championship time or NCAA tournament time, bonus points is what it's all about. Here's your bonus points workhorse in Tony Ramos. Yeah, he doesn't quite look like he's getting on his offense right now. He's looking for, you see that hand down, looking at defense. His vision looks a little bit high. Thomas trying to snap a two match losing streak. He was swept last weekend in dual meets against Penn State and Ohio State, including a technical fall by Steber. So he's he really wants to get back in the winning ways. Yeah, I think you're right. I think these are two teams that came into this meet on two different, totally different trajectories. You know, you've got Illinois just basically tanking it after the uh, and so they're they're out, they're trying to rebound, and, and and Iowa trying to do you know keep the air in the balloon so to speak, so they you know add to that momentum that they created after beating Penn State. So you know, but different environment on the road, and I've really been surprised at how little offense that uh, Ramos has gotten uh, put together to this point. He's not even looking for a shot right now. Already two minutes down in this first period, not a major scoring chance for either one of these wrestlers. Tenth ranked Daryl Thomas, second ranked. Tony Ramos. You know, see, the Ramos is, just appears to me to be wrestling a little bit high. And you talk about that. He's respecting that athletic ability of Thomas. It's, this is not, uh, you know, you want to see, if you're the Illinois coaching staff, you want to see your guy hang in there and, and maybe keep that match tight if you're, Coach Brands from Iowa, you want to, you're asking your question, why isn't Tony Ramos getting on a shot? Why isn't that is, he likes to shoot to that leg with the knee uh, pad on it. You're not even looking for it. Well, Tom Brand said it was back to work, business as usual the day after Penn State, but it's awfully tough just to put behind such a big win as you had last Friday night over Penn State. I think, uh, Final seconds sticking off of this first period. You gotta like uh, the period if you're Daryl Thomas as he goes scoreless with the undefeated Ramos. Let's send it down Matt's side. Shane Sparks standing by with the victorious Jesse Delgado. Jesse, last week you were controlling Megalutis. He didn't wrestle seven minutes. He got caught and pinned. Tonight you came in, it was seven minutes strong. You dominated in all positions. Talk about that huge win. Uh, yeah, you know, it was just um, correcting what I was doing wrong the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, it's getting better for every match that I lose. Uh, that seems to be every match that I lose, I don't finish matches, and you know maybe I could have finished that match a little better, but you know just stayed where I was good, and I knew I had a lot of points to, to fall back on, so I gave up the stall calls. You were the last guy to beat McDonough uh, in December of 2011. Why do you match up so well against him? Um, you know I think it, it might be my speed, his uh, his style. He's he's a funky guy. He relies on funk, and every time uh, good technique is going to beat funk. So I think that's why I match up so well with him. Congratulations. Enjoy the victory. Thanks. And as you see now, Tony Ramos, uh, Jim, we were waiting for the points from Ramos. He gets the escape after choosing down and then the first takedown. And now Ramos with a quick 3-0 lead here in this second period. Yeah, nice job by Ramos there, stuffing the head. And, and he does this as well as anybody. He's able to go ahead and circle around and, and uh, get the, the uh, you know, greatest scoring opportunity. Not fought off very well by Thomas in that situation. Didn't do a good job of squaring up. And uh, Ramos gets the two points. Did you notice what you, I liked what Delgado's comments were, you know, he's out there getting on his offense and didn't necessarily finish real strong, but that's the recipe for an upset. 
score and keep scoring. You know, and, and that's exactly what he did. And he won that match, I think, at the end of the first period with that second takedown. You know, not relying and knowing that Matt McDonough's, you gotta take him down more than one time. You gotta take a national champion down two, three. The greatest you gotta take down five times, you know. Uh, so you've got to, you can't just rely on one takedown. You're not gonna beat a guy like that three to two or you know, it's just not gonna happen. You gotta go out there and keep scoring. So speaking of scoring, I think that uh, Tony Ramos has decided the best place for me to be is in the top position to go ahead and really put the pressure on Daryl Thomas. He's had a lot of respect for the athletic ability of Thomas. Scoring opportunity here with the chicken wing and the half Nelson on the near side, but basically yeah. riding. Yeah, and he will have well north of a minute riding time. It's just stalling call there. Comes in late in the period on Thomas as well. Ramos got that takedown about 15, 20 seconds into the period. See Jesse Delgado's dad, Jesus, he's all thumbs up and smiles. His son is going to be the talk of the wrestling world this weekend after knocking off Matt McDonough, the previously undefeated number one ranked wrestler in the country. As now we go to the third period, Thomas goes down on that time. No problems, Jim, to his feet, 3-1. But uh, that riding time and a, and a takedown disadvantage, some work still to do here for Daryl Thomas. Yeah, I think that this is where you're going to see Ramos be a little bit more active on his shots. He's waiting for Thomas to push back into him. That's what's happening here. Watch the territory. Ramos will slowly move into the guy, kind of stalk him a little bit. And then when he feels that pressure back, then he'll go off the end of Oh, this is a potential scoring opportunity. I'm sure Thomas saw that before, but Ramos slips into a single leg that time instead of the double trouble. She saw him do effectively in the Penn State meet for the fall. Thomas, one of the five seniors being honored here tonight. What a story, Daryl Thomas. Huh? Never won a state championship, never qualified for the NCAAs, but uh, here he is as a senior, ranked 10th in the country, trying to make that run here as a stalling call. Again there on Thomas as we're to our feet. Just a good job of, and, and Ramos is really working the head. Watch his hand movement right there. Gets right into the front headlock, okay. And you can tell that he respects the athletic ability of Thomas, but this is the way you go ahead and really make him work hard. And right there, it's, it's one and done. Thomas put his head down and allowed R Ramos to go around. Now, if you're Tony Ramos, you're eyeing up uh, bonus points. There you see Tony's parents. Alan Deb is uh, Matt's side for this one. Tony Ramos with a 7-3 lead. Plenty of riding time, so that point is secured, 8-3 with uh, 45 seconds to go. Ramos in again on that shot at the edge of the mat. Yeah, Thomas is doing a pretty good job. Well, now he just fell asleep right there. Now he's gonna give up back points. This is uh, two back points at least. And with riding time, that's gonna be a major decision. So just like that, Tony Ramos, he might be working for a fall here. That's uh, close. That, he's gonna get it. He got it. And just like that, I tell you so what. what, you get out of position against a good wrestler like Tony Ramos, Jim, either for a second. Well, that's a classic example, Joe, of, you know, you just, you work at the pump handle until the water comes out, you know, <laughs> and then he worked and worked and worked, and that pump handle was Daryl Thomas's head, worked it pretty hard, a great job getting the fall for the Hawks.